Hi and welcome to the repeater tutorial video. Got some text here, got some animated tracking. Let's add repeater to it and we can see that we get one copy mirrored on the X and Y. We don't have to mirror if you don't want. You can choose any direction and we can choose the number of copies that we want. Then we have the padding in between each copy and you don't need uniform padding. If you want, you can use padding X and Y to get it exactly how you want it. Another thing we have is inherit layer scale. So by default, that's enabled. And you'll see that if we scale it up, the padding is relative to the scale of the layer. However, if we don't do that, the padding is not relative to that. And the padding is absolute, as you can see here, the padding never changes. So I'll reset the layout there. Now we have row or column offset. So I'll just add an extra copy for each. And currently you can define an offset for the row or the column. And this looks really cool. You can animate it, it kind of looks like one of those ticking tapes. And we can also set the column as well. And this using the directional mode, we also have an angular mode here where instead of an X and Y, we'd simply have a single offset value. That is just the sine or cosine of the angle that we have. Currently at an angle of zero, this is 100% on the Y axis. If this was to be 90 degrees, this offset would be 100% on the X axis and anything in between is a mixture of both. You can get some very fun things happening with this angular offset. Moving on, let's come down to time offset here. And before we continue, I'm actually gonna just disable the tracking for a second. Currently we have no animation happening at all. So this will make no difference, doesn't matter. And the value that we have here, the amount measured in frames is the amount per repeat that we have. So currently with the copy of one on each X and Y and mirror enabled, we have nine copies. Each copy will be offset in time five frames from the previous. So a total of 45 frame offset. But since we have no animation, nothing happens. So I'm gonna add disco text. And that will just add a trim paths effect. And we can see that in five frame increments, we have all the layers appearing. Let's come down to visualize order here. And what that will do is color code these to let you know which order they're happening in. Currently the orientation is column. So they are staggered by column. Red means that it happens first, whereas yellow means it happens last. And we can change that. We can go to row, we can change the order. We could do a mirror, we could do a random. Uh, we can reverse it, we can increment it. What increment means is it goes first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, like so. I'll just come in and reset that and I will take off disco text and turn the animated tracking back on. So something that's very important is that if you have a layer where the buffer size is changing temporarily or over time, that's gonna give you some effects that you probably don't want. So let's just make a bunch of copies here. And I'm going to set the offset to five frames. And we can see that we're getting basically the same result that we would get if we had um, motion tile or repertile is that we're getting the jaggedness because the buffer size is changing temporarily and it can't interpolate between that. So that's just one limitation, I would say, of time offset. Your layers buffer should not change over time for this to work correctly. Let's reset that. And one other thing I wanted to mention in terms of effects is that you can have effects. So let's say we wanted to add a box around this and we have a box here, but the order matters um, because text box three draws a box around your text. It has no way of knowing that repeater has generated a bunch of copies. So if we put text box afterwards, it will only draw the box around one. Whereas if we put it beforehand, it would draw a box around all of them. Now let's say that we had our copies overlapping each other. That's where blending comes in. So at its default, we're drawing each copy at 100%, but you might want to draw each copy at 50%. And then we would see that where copies overlap each other, the alpha channel is higher. Now you can choose the behavior of the intercopy blending. You could set it to add, which will make them brighter, or screen, which will cap the values at one, or alpha add, which is useful in certain compositing scenarios. I'll reset that. And the last thing that we can talk about here is the buffer expansion. So by default, After Effects is trying to be very efficient with continuously rasterized layers and vector layers. And so it only renders the pixels that it needs. If we drag this layer off screen, we'll see that the copies are actually also getting interrupted here because it's only considering this part of the buffer. To address that, we can simply increase the buffer expansion. Otherwise, you shouldn't really need that at all. And that brings us to what if we wanna use this on a layer that isn't continuously rasterized? For example, I have this picture of my beautiful cat Gollum here, and we know that by its nature, images are not vector layers. And so to enable continuously rasterize, we actually have to create a pre-comp of that, and then that will allow us to turn on the continuously rasterized switch whereas we did not have access to that when it's not pre-comped. 
Now that our layer is continuously rasterized, we can add repeater and get the behavior that we would expect. If we turned continuously rasterize off, we would see that the buffer expansion gets cut off at the bounds of the raster layer. And we also get a warning from the plugin saying the layer needs to be collapsed transforms for it to have correct behavior. So we'll just tick continuously rasterize and then we'll get the behavior that we want. If you have troubles with the plugin, you can come up to about and support and click on get support. And we have a notion page that tells you how to use the plugin, why system requirements, limitations and installation if you're having trouble getting the plugin up and running as well as what all the parameters do and a bunch more. So that's about it. Hope you enjoy using Repeater. Let us know what you think and any feature suggestions that you may have.